Spain. Sunny, noisy, beautiful, exciting. That's what I painted at the start, at least. I am one of Spain's most famous painters. Francisco Goya is my name. You call me Goya. First, a nobody. Then, a somebody. Now, a superstar. But things didn't go all my way. First things first. The story starts in a small, dusty village, deep in the Spanish countryside. That's me, on my mother's lap in the window. My name is Goya, and I was born here in a little country village near a town called Saragossa. It is a dry, empty place. Nothing much happens here, just kids playing in the street and the dogs sleeping in the sun. This is my dad. He is a gilder, someone who decorates things with gold, like frames, statues, plates, very popular around here. And there is my mother through the doorway. We five children tire her out a bit. <laughs> she comes from a smart family, but we are a very ordinary family now. Nothing extraordinary. When I was old enough, I started at the local school in our town, but I didn't learn that much in the classroom. I like being outside. At school, my best friend Martin and I did everything together. We both loved hunting, and often we would go off into the countryside with our guns and dogs and shoot at birds until the sun went down. When I was 13, I went to art school. Mr. Lutzan was a friend of my dad's and the best painter in our town. With him we learned how to draw and paint and choose colors and brushes properly. I wanted to be the best. And after a while I decided to enter the big painting competition at the art school in Madrid, the capital city of Spain. Every ambitious young boy wanted to go there. And if you won the first prize, you were taught for free! Can you guess what happened to me? The judges didn't give my work a single mark. I was very, very upset. So, I left Spain and went off to practice in Italy. On my return, I met up with the Bayou boys from my hometown, who'd also been at Luzan's art school. Hey, Goya! Good to see you back! They were already doing well as painters and were happy to help me too. What's more, I fell in love with their sister, Peppa and I asked her to marry me. Now I knew that I was really part of a painting family, and my new wife's brothers would help me to get a good job. Come to the city, they said. The big capital city of Madrid. There's lots of painting work to be done at the King's Palace there. I packed my bags and set off on a long journey to Madrid. Sure enough, the Bayou boys were right. They worked for the King and Queen of Spain. And there was lots of work to go around. The king's palace in Madrid was gigantic. It had lots and lots of rooms with cold, bare walls. No decoration at all. The king wanted beautiful things to decorate these rooms, so he needed lots of painters and lots of paintings. My job was to paint jolly pictures of Spanish people having fun. These pictures were taken to the weavers, and they made them into tapestries. At that time, tapestry was very popular. Do you know, a tapestry is like a picture made out of material. A bit like a carpet that you hang on the wall. This picture shows a game we used to play with a blanket and a life-size straw doll that you throw in the air. The royal family were delighted by my designs, all showing the happy side of Spanish life, and I was putting all my warmth and cheerfulness into my work. Great job! Hey, thought the king's family and friends. This guy is good. Soon the lords and ladies at the royal palace were queuing up to ask me to paint their pictures. The icing on the cake was when I was appointed painter to the king. Just as things were going so well, I went to stay with a friend, and there, a terrible thing happened to me. At my friend's house, I became very ill. 
he was very worried about me. I was in bed for two months. I felt dizzy. Are you all right, Goya? As my fever went away, to my horror, I realized I could not hear anything anymore. Can you imagine what that is like? Not hearing anything? Just silence. When I was well enough to start work again, what do you think I painted? Sunny, cheerful pictures? Not at all. I painted how I felt inside. I was sad. Something horrible had happened to me and I wanted to show how I felt. But who wants to buy sad and angry paintings? I had to get back to work. Through my royal connections at the palace, I became friendly with a woman who was thought to be the most beautiful woman in the whole of Spain, the Duchess of Alba. She was a knockout. <laughs> she couldn't walk down the street without everyone staring at her. She and her husband invited me to stay at their large country house. The Duchess and I laughed and had fun together. Too much, maybe. I was delighted when she asked me to paint her. Of course, I accepted at once. Okay, so she may not look that beautiful to you. But in my day, I can tell you she was a real beauty. I never gave this picture to her. I kept it all for myself. How do you make pictures? With a pencil? With paint? With your hands? Of course. I use a pen brush, mostly, but I also used a sort of knife, a painting knife, to smear the paint on like butter. Oh yes, and fingers. Who doesn't use their fingers a little bit, eh? And a cloth for rubbing as well. And because we didn't have electric lights in my day, when I wanted to work in the evening, I stuck candles in my hat. I'm lucky I did not burn all my hair off. <laughs> One day. The Prime Minister of Spain, Signor Godoy, asked me to paint a special picture, just for him. It was a lady... Shh, with no clothes on. <sighs> now, in my day it was not okay to have a picture of a lady with no clothes on, on your wall. So, Mr. Godoy also asked me to paint a second picture of the same lady with clothes on. We had to be very careful because the priests in the Church of Spain were very powerful and strict. And if they caught us, we would be in very big trouble. So, if the priest come around, quick, he take the nudie lady down and put the nice clothes lady up. No one, even to this day, knows who the lady is. Except, of course, for me. And I'm not telling. Even though I was getting older, I still loved to paint. But I had lived through things in my life that made me depressed. I saw terrible fighting in Spain. When an army from France, the next door country, marched in, and they were cruel to ordinary Spanish people and life became very hard and miserable for us. Now that I was an old man of 74, I decided to leave the big city behind me. And I found a house, the deaf man's house, in the countryside. I found a housekeeper and I moved there with my paintbrushes and a few of my belongings. Have you ever scribbled on the wall and got a telling off from your mother? You naughty boy! And what about trying to draw when you feel cross inside? Well, I did both those things at the same time. <laughs> I painted dark, nightmarish pictures on the walls of my house, full of anger. Anger at my deafness, at fighting, at war, at cruel and unfair people. I put all this anger into a series of pictures that are famous today as my black paintings. No one asked me to paint these, and I never showed them to anyone. But go and see them today. 
you'll find they're still pretty worrying. My name is Francisco Goya. I lived for 80 years. Years that were full of big changes and difficult times. I saw the beautiful side of life, but I also saw the darker side too. I used my gift for painting to turn my feelings into pictures that stay in your mind forever. I am Goya.